Hi guys, I'm Lisa. Welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to continue with what we started last week. We're going to cover two more trap doors to avoid during your EEOC investigation. And again, these are things that could really mess you up if you don't know to look out for them. And like last week, I'm also going to share some of the good stuff you might bump into along the way. Trap door five, being unreasonable. There are a lot of ways that being reasonable will help you. First, it's a good way to stay grounded so you don't lose it and do something you regret. Besides the emotional benefit, being reasonable also helps your case. A lot of decisions at EEOC are based around the reasonable person standard. It doesn't apply to every decision that EEOC makes, but it applies to a lot of them. Harassment claims, for example, come down to how a reasonable person would have reacted in your situation. And the reasonable person standard also comes into play with non-pecuniary harm, where the question is whether a reasonable person would have been harmed by what happened to you. By demonstrating that you are a reasonable person, you can bolster your credibility, not just now during your investigation, but later at your hearing. Discrimination makes us feel hurt, angry, scared, all the bad feelings. All those feelings are going to be magnified by the stress of an investigation. One of the hardest times for me to keep my cool was when I saw NASA's pretext for the first time. Our employer's pretext says that we're to blame for what happened to us. Your employer may say things that aren't true or twist the facts to say what they want them to. Knowing it's coming will give you a chance to mentally prepare for the onslaught and give you a chance to plan some ways to discharge the negative emotions. Putting your support people on standby during your investigation is a good idea. So are things like shopping for food that's going to keep your body nourished and pre-planning things that you can do to self-soothe yourself when you go home at night so that you can wind down and sleep. Anything you can do to stay emotionally centered and physically strong. And the worst thing you can do with all those emotions is take them out on your investigator. Investigators are only there to do a job. So I tried to make that as easy as possible by having my evidence in order ahead of time and by being as professional as I could throughout the process. There may be times when you have to challenge or question your investigator, like if you see them not following the compliance manual or leaving out evidence and witnesses. I'd suggest putting that stuff in writing. And of course, include those observations in your rebuttal to the agency's final report of investigation. That way, when it's hearing time, if your employer moves for summary judgment, you'll already have those objections documented. Documenting an incomplete or biased record will make it harder for your employer to prevail on summary judgment. Being reasonable may feel like you're getting the short end of the stick, especially when your employer is being cruel, but that's the most important time to be reasonable. Those moments of stark contrast between your behavior and theirs will give your investigator and later your AJ a very clear picture of the difference between you and your employer who's intentionally trying to harm you. I believe that's why my investigator, AJ, and eventually OFO all saw what my boss was up to. Your employer knows that staying reasonable is a good idea, so expect them to try to bait you into reacting out of proportion. NASA refused to give me a two-day extension on witness rebuttals so that I could attend my mother-in-law's funeral with my husband. I was super pissed. Because this time, they weren't just hurting me. They were hurting my husband, and at the worst possible time. But me getting angry and losing it while my husband's heart was breaking wasn't going to help him at all. And I also wanted to show my investigator that I appreciated that she'd at least tried to get me the extension. So I took NASA's choice in stride and did what I had to to hang in. I think that drove home to my investigator that I was trying to be reasonable and NASA wasn't. If that wasn't enough to convince her, two weeks later NASA asked me to extend their deadline to complete the ROI. I thought that particular one-two punch was really scummy. But I agreed to the extension without making a fuss. Trapdoor 6. Expecting witnesses to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Self-preservation is human nature, so when your boss starts to see you as the enemy, you can expect your co-workers to jump on that bandwagon. Every one of my co-workers who were witnesses smeared my character in their sworn statements. And reading that stuff was even harder than reading NASA's pretext, because it felt so personal. But before I got too far into their statements, I found myself chuckling at how terrible they were at helping NASA. It looked like none of them had any idea what to lie about, so they just focused on slamming me. But besides their implications that I was a bad person, every one of them still said exactly what I needed them to in order to win my case. For instance, one guy told the investigator that I kept a clear zipper bag full of pill bottles on my desk every day. And in his statement, he twisted my bag of pills into an implication that I wasn't really disabled at all. I just wanted everybody in the office to think I was. 
It's true that I kept my bag of pills on top of my desk. I did that because if I didn't, I'd get busy during the day and forget to take them. And they were in a clear bag so that I could find what I needed quickly. But fortunately, Mr. Bag of Pills didn't know enough to lie about the conversation he witnessed between me and my boss, where she flatly refused to discuss reasonable accommodations with me. My investigation was one of the worst things I ever went through in my life. It kept my emotions stirred up for weeks. But it was also one of the best experiences in my life, because now I know what I'm made of. I was really afraid that in the end, all that dishonesty and pretext would pay off and NASA would win. In fact, I expected it. But this time, they didn't win. So when your employer starts slinging mud at you, remember, the truth and the law are powerful things. And it is possible to rise above the BS and win anyway. So I'll see you next week. And until then, you guys take care and hang in. I